Good morning, students. It's me, Miss Sonia, and today we are back with another lesson. As you all know, that we have completed agriculture along with livestock, and yes, we have discussed about the physical and geographical factors which are affecting the production of farming. But today, in particular, we are going to discuss about factors affecting production of wheat, in which we are going to discuss about the physical factors as well as the geographical factors. But before moving forward, hurry up, grab your notebook along with pencil and pen, and start noting the important pointers because there were multiple MCQs along with questions which were included in the past papers. So let's get started. According to SLO number five point three point two, it says that discuss how natural and human factors affect the production of small scale and cash crop farms. We so in in this episode we are going to discuss about wheat in particular in which we are going to discuss about the human factors and natural factors which are affecting the production of small scale and cash crop farms small scale means subsistence farming for survival and cash crop means that you are selling your product to the other countries for to generate the revenue and to generate profit from profit from that So this is basically the SLO which has been asked, and yes, there is a picture which is given on the left right side, which you can see that this is the field of wheat. Now, starting with the introduction of wheat, wheat is a staple food used in manufacture of bread and a variety of baked products. So you can see that that wheat is not only used for one purpose. But yes, wheat is also used for multiple purpose, which you can see over here that it is basically used to make roti, and it is also uh, it is also essential, and it is also used to make bread as well. So when I talk about the term staple food, so staple food is basically known as a food that is eaten. Uh, routinely, it means that you are eating it regular on regular basis. And in such quantity quantities that it constitute a dominant portion of a standard diet for a given people. It means that that, for example, your for your survival and for to fill that portion in your tummy, that is known as the staple food. It means that wheat is important for life. It is basically fulfilling your dietary portion, and it is also fulfilling your portion just to make you feel healthy. So that is known as staple food. Okay, and then low grades of wheat and byproducts of the far milling are used as a feed for livestock. It means that that you are using the flour as a livestock, and yes, byproducts are also used for livestock. Livestock means that you are raising animals to uh, have eggs, to have milk, and etc. items from them. Now, starting with factors affecting production of wheat in some parts of NWFP and the Potawar Plateau. Where winter rainfall is sufficient. When we talk about the factors which are affecting the production of wheat, then in some parts of NWFP, that is Northwest Frontier Province and the Potawa Plateau, where winter rainfall is sufficient, it means that the rainfall in winter is not uh, in a greater amount. It is sufficient, and the desisted uh, landscape makes irrigation difficult. It means that obviously, when we are going through the rainfall season. Uh, and uh, in winters, it makes it a way too impossible for the irrigation. Irrigation is uh, not easy in those areas. In that, uh, when we talk about winters, infertile soil, rough topography, and limited water supply do not support the cultivation of wheat. Why? Because there is improper irrigation. The fertile soil is not fertile. It is infertile. It is rugged, and yes, there is a limited supply of water over there. So it is not supporting the cultivation of wheat at that point. Water loses from the canals to the fields, and automatically you're losing water, which are trans, uh, uh, which are coming from the canals, and then we are supplying the water to the fields. Then the other factors which are affecting the production of wheat are, at times we have surplus wheat which rots away in open storages. It means that we are having. Um, abundance. It means we are having a larger quantity at uh, uh, at some times. We are having it in a larger quantity, but still, since we are not having that much storage, so it is wasted. Pakistan is really self-sufficient in wheat due to ever-increasing population, and yes, 
it means that we have sufficient storage of wheat but we are increasing the population due to that we are suffering because majority of the people are dependent upon agriculture and farming gradual decrease in cultivable areas due to water logging and salinity and guess when we are facing the problem of water logging and salinity so due to both of these problems we are not having that much cultivable areas it is decreasing and yes heavy taxation left on wheat industry by the government the government have placed heavy taxation which each and every individual have to follow especially the farmers and yes uh, they are paid by the cash crop farmers and the uh, sustainable farmers as well so that is another disturbing point which is in front of you now starting with the geographical requirement of wheat starting with temperature wheat requires mild temperature from 20, 10 degree celsius till 20 degree celsius it means the temperature should be in between at the time of growing and warm it means at the time of growing the temperature should be this much but when we are talking about the warm part that at the time of warming it should be around 25 degrees till 30 degrees celsius for dripping it means when you are cultivating it at that time the temperature should be in between if for example the temperature increased and decreased and if it is not in between these timings then automatically if it is increased then it can destroy your crops and if it if the temperature is decreased then automatically uh, the crops can go on fire so you have to keep both of the things in your mind needs at least 90 days and perfectly for better varieties 120 days growing period with mild moist weather it means the weather should be moist it should be mild and it requires around 90 days for perfectly com completing it and for making it a better variety now coming towards the rainfall moderate rainfall a little rain just before the harvest swells the grain and ensures a better yield so when we talk about the production of wheat we need a moderate rainfall if you are having more then the strain falls then automatically it can occur in the situation of flood and water logging most dependent on irrigation obviously the irrigation uh, statics should be proper if irrigation is not proper then automatically it will result in uh, uh, you know uh, it can destroy your crops only potowar plateau and some parts of mwfp are rain fed regions so you can see that that potowar plateau and uh, the other parts of nwfp are rain fed uh, regions in which there there is rainfall but there is moderate rainfall not that much now coming towards the geographical requirements of wheat starting with soil moderately stiff loamy or clayey soil but does not thrive if there is stagnant water it means that you need a loamy surface you need a clay surface <coughs> for the crops to be grown over there if the surface is not clay if the surface is is not soft then automatically it can create trouble for growing wheat flat or undulating ground to facilitate the use of machineries and yes uh, you should make the land flat if for example the land is not flat so for that purpose what you can do you can use machine bees to make it flat then la land must be well drained it is important to be uh, it is important to drain the land if you are not draining the land then automatically you cannot grow crops on the land so soil and climate wheat is adopted to regions with cool seasons followed by dry warm seasons so from cool to dry it is followed that way best crops cold winter and comparatively warm spring or summer with moderate rainfall so you can see that you should have a moderate rainfall you should have spring and summers over there because in warm temperature there is a, a high growth of that either on poorly drained and sandy soil obviously if it if it would be poorly drained then definitely it cannot be grown in abundance sandy loam to clay soil are well for this purpose it should be clay otherwise it will create trouble in growing the crops then silt to clay loam soils produce the best yield so you can see that the loamy crops uh, loam soil it produce the best yields then cultural practices it is basically the method of cultivation that how exactly the wheat crops are grown 
number one seed bed and preparation manufacturing it means that first of all you are just making the land flood and then on distance you are just setting up the seed seed bed you are putting the seeds and then the time of sowing comes then you are um watering the seeds and then see you're checking the seed rate and plantation method then you are also checking out that whether insects are not over there you are uh, giving the pest control to you are you know spraying the fields to avoid insects and then interculture and weeding then weeding occurs and then harvesting harvesting means that you are just taking out the crops you're cultivating them then you're storing them and then finally the process comes uh which process you're supplying the wheat to the industries and then what industries are doing industries are making different products from the wheat the wheat powder such as bread roti etc uh, materials are made from the, the, them so if you want to see cultural practices more in detail then you can search videos on youtube which includes about that how exactly the cultural process of wheat take place the insects and pests which can disturb or which can destroy the wheat crops are grasshopper crickets amphids army worms white ants and then when we talk about pests then these are roster feeds and smut of feed then the wheat usage are food made with the wheat are a major part of the diet for over a third of the world people wheat can be found in some form at almost every meal when we talk about food made with wheat then automatically you can see that around like over a third of the world's people is utilizing wheat for their uh, utilizing the wheat for to satisfy their needs and yes to fulfill their basic needs now coming up that which products are made from wheat such as the products are the following breads cookies cakes crackers macaroni spaghetti and other forms of pasta are made from flour which is ground uh, which is ground up kernels of wheat so you can see that all of these things are made from wheat now discussing the wheat growing regions cultivation areas of wheat in pakistan are less productive areas of wheat production are included in all of the four provinces of pakistan in these areas neither the land is fertile and smooth it means that the land is not fertile and the land is not smooth as well so it is growing in the four provinces no arrangements or irrigation are possible so the farmers have to depend on rain if it rains in time then it is possible to plant crop otherwise they have to depend on other areas for food and their other requirements so you can see that there is not any proper system which is available over there so due to that reason they have to depend upon rainfall just to grow wheat punjab is the main place where wheat is grown and the other cities are where wheat is grown are sialkot rahim yar khan sargoda bhawalpur bhawalnagar gujarat muzaffarabad and etc so you can see that they're dependent upon agriculture they're dependent upon rainfall but if rain is not over there then they have to depend and they have to uh, search for another uh, land for the food as well so the assignment for today is discuss how natural and human factors affect the production of small scale and cash crop farms in which in particular you have to discuss wheat in detail thank you so much everyone i hope this presentation turned out to be something important and informative for all of you and i hope that all of those misconceptions are pretty much clear to all of you if you people are having any sort of questions so you can ask me on kp and you can even ask me on my youtube channel i will respond to you over there inshallah we'll return back with another presentation for all of you till then take care barakallah and 